Hi, and happy holidays to everyone out there in uh, the World Doll Day, five days of Christmas. I'm bringing to you today something very special and very rare. Uh, I do specialize in China dolls. My name is Kathy Turner, and I have a shop on Ruby Lane known as Vertu Doll. Today, I'm gonna to talk about one of the early China dolls made not in Germany, as most of them were, but made in France, and that is those of Jacob Petit. And first, I wanna give you a little bit of background on, on Jacob Petit. He was born in Paris to a large Jewish family. He was one of 11 children. Uh, his family name was Mordecai. Uh, in 1808, there was uh, a decree by Napoleon called the Bayonne Decree, which stipulated that Jewish families needed to officially record their family names, and the family did so. Uh, but when Jacob Petit became married in uh, 1816, he married uh, a young lady who was the daughter of a baker, and her last name was Petit, and he adopted her name. Uh, it's supposition on my part, but I suppose that for business reasons, it was much easier to go through life as Jacob Petit rather than Jacob Mordecai at that time, uh, being anti-Semitism, unfortunately, being a fact of life at that time period. So he went forth as Jacob Petit. He was a very talented uh, young man. Uh, his father was a jeweler. Maybe he got his talent, uh, artistic talent from him. He studied sculpture, and he went and worked for Sevs for a time, and then he traveled Europe. He went to England, Italy, and elsewhere in Europe studying in the arts. He actually wrote a book on the decorative arts as well before he finally went into the porcelain business. He purchased a factory, uh, a pre-existing factory, called Baruch Weil in Fontainebleau. And uh, there he started producing fine porcelain articles, a lot of figurines and the like, and dolls. It wasn't until 1843 that he received a patent for his dolls. And now we can turn and look at a couple examples of those. I happen to have two that show you what the very large and small of his doll product line might have looked like. The smallest one happens to have its original French kid body. I'm going to take it off this stand so that I can show you the complete figure here. That's your early French kid body. This one has never been off this body, so I can't see the markings on this head. Obviously, it would have worn a wig. You can see the wig pulls on the back of the head. So you would think, well, I can't properly identify this body and this doll, rather. But then we have the large version. Pretty much clearly the same model, but in a rather ginormous size. We weighed this head and it weighs one pound, six ounces. It's marked par brevet, which shows that he, the patent that he had on his heads. It's also marked inside, JP for Jacob Petit, in blue. And you'll notice that the inside of the head is also fully glazed. It's very smooth inside, but given the thickness of this head, it pretty much, ha and the early date also, it pretty much has to have been pressed into the mold. This one also exhibits a lot of wig pulls. And then there's a little glaze gap on the top of the head, which probably made it easier for uh, sticking a wig on there. You notice that the features, they have a very vivid color. And I think a lot of French uh, porcelain products going forward also had these rather vivid colors. Now there are other models that he made. I just only had two to bring for you today. These are exceptionally rare to find. He was in business for making dolls for only five years. He went bankrupt in 1848, uh, and he had terrible business problems going forward. The poor man actually ended up dying destitute. Uh, he was a much better artist than he was businessman. But we today can sometimes still find these wonderful examples of these early dolls. These are the earliest of the French
porcelain dolls, really. Kathy, what, what, what would you date these two at? Well, they had to be between 1843 and 1848. So somewhere in so that there's five, no other, no other indication okay. just between those, that I mean, five-year period. That's very rare. It's very, very rare, very early. Anything when you, time you find a doll head that's pre-1850 and you're sure of it. And, and, and Kathy, don't you think it's interesting that they, they're really following the market trend of the other doll, paper mache's of the Absolutely. time? Absolutely. If you look at the profile and the head of this doll and the hairstyle or lack thereof, it looks very much like the German paper mache dolls like Voigt and the like of the same period. Very much hand in hand with that. Also, if you notice one other thing, and if you look at the doll in profile, this is a very heavy head, as we said. You look how the head has tilted downwards. It probably slumped. Yeah. When it was in the making. But it doesn't look it doesn't look defective. It no, looks... no, it was clearly good enough, mm -hmm. <laughs> as they say. And what what age of um, where would where where do you think they fit in as characters? These as two characters. Well, I mean, are they little boys? Little oh girls, no, these ladies? would be these would be babies or young children. Young children. Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't be appropriate to dress, even though this one has a, a wasp waist body, I would judge this to be a child. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, I think the big one could have been actually an infant. A large baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. they're just fabulous. Yep, so lucky. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. And let's, let's give the audience just a, a shot of the, the mark because that's really... You want to look inside? Yes. There you go. And think about it, you know, if that's glued onto a body, you would you would never know that that was there. No, you wouldn't. So lucky you if you can find one of these under your Christmas tree. Or maybe go to your shop. Or there maybe. might be one for sale. You know? Oh, not if it's in my hot little hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Kathy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.